So we're going to start off uh, section 7.2. We're going to kind of have a little flashback back to chapter 4. All right, so I want you to, to, to consider this region enclosed by um, f of x equals the square root of x, y equals 0, and x equals 2. So here's x equals 2. Of course, here's y equals 0. And here is the square root of x, uh, y equals the square root of x. And so if we want to know the area enclosed by those three functions, then we use an integral to do it. But remember, really what we did was we used a, a Riemann sum. So we took um, this area, we split it up into a bunch of rectangles, and then we summed those up. So this is the area of an individual rectangle. This is the summation of all those rectangles. And then we take the limit as delta x approaches 0, or as the number of rectangles approaches infinity. And that's where we get that definite integral from. Okay, so we do that. Um, we get this definite integral. We're going to integrate from 0 to 2, from, uh, from x equals 0 to x equals 2. We're going to integrate the square root of x. We do that. It's a pretty easy antiderivative. We evaluate that at uh, x equals 2 and at x equals 0. We subtract those, and then we just do a little simplifying here, and, and we have uh, 4 thirds times square root of 2. So that represents the, the, the two-dimensional area here. Um, in this region R. Okay, so again, that's that's review, um, just to kind of refresh your memory. Now we're going to take this now in section uh, in chapter seven, and extend this idea of um, adding up lots and lots and lots of these shapes to get an area. We're going to extend that into three dimensions. So now we're going to take um, kind of lots of slices three-dimensional slices and add those up to get a volume, all right? So the first part of chapter um, 7.2 is volumes with known cross-sections, all right? So the idea here is that if we consider this little uh, rectangle here, this slice, if we use that as the base of a three-dimensional shape and then build a shape up um, um, toward our view, so toward us here as we look down at it, um, we're going to have some shape, and the shape can vary. Um, we're going to look at a square. We're going to look at an um, equilateral triangle. We're going to look at a semicircle, but it could be a rectangle with some um, specified um, height to base ratio. It could be um, some kind of a right triangle. It could be any kind of, um, any kind of different shape that constitutes the cross-section. So. I think for me, the hard part of these is, is really visualizing what's happening. Um, and so it takes, sometimes it takes a little bit of work and, a, and, and some time to kind of get that. But what we have here is we have the base here, and we're going to use this base to build up a bunch of squares in our first example with square cross sections. A bunch of squares that stand on end, almost like a, a domino would stand up on, on the page. Right, so we have all these squares stacked up and then lined up here, almost like index cards. And if we did that, then we would have a volume that used this shape, this region R, as its base and square cross sections. All right. So imagine I was looking at this three-dimensional kind of cross section from that perspective right there. I was standing there and looking that way. I was, I'm a, like a little miniature person, and I'm standing on this paper looking this way at this slice of my three-dimensional shape. It would look like this as I look at it. It would be a square, and this right here, the height of that function represents the base of my shape. Right. So this is, the, this is the, what the base looks like. It's the square root of x. And then the shape that is built up off that base is a square, and it has these dimensions. I have the base is square root of x, and it's a square, so the height is also square root of x. And it has a thickness of delta x, just like this thing here has a thickness of delta x. So we're going to calculate the area of this one slice. So we have the base is square root of x. Uh, the volume is going to be x times delta x. So the volume of this 
um, square prism is um, x times delta x. And then we're going to add up all those squares, because remember, we don't just have one square. We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all of these lined up one after the other. And then we're going to take the limit as delta x approaches 0. So we're going to make these sections thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, and that's going to give us a better and better estimate of this um, exact volume of the shape that we're talking about. All right, so we're going to sum those up. So what I have here is my integrand, and as I approach, as I apply this limit, this this delta x becomes the dx. So you can see I have this x delta x. When I apply the limit as delta x approaches zero, my velocity, um, not velocity, the volume is the integral from zero to two. Again, we're going from x equals zero to x equals two of x dx. We integrate that, and we get two cubic units. So that is the volume of uh, this three-dimensional shape, which uses this region R as its base. And it consists of squares standing up on end out of this page and stacked up one after the other between 0 and 2. All right. Now using that exact same base, using that exact same region R, we could also build up equilateral triangles. So instead of squares standing up out of the page, we're going to have equilateral triangles standing up out of the page and then stacked up. All right. So this, the volume of a single triangle is going to be the area of this face here times delta x. And this face has an area of root 3 over 4x. All right. So you might reasonably say, well, how do you know what that is? We have to come back here, and it takes a fair bit of work to figure out that area in this case. All right? Because all we really know is the base is the square root of x. It's defined by that function that we were given. And it's an equilateral triangle. Okay, So what does that mean? It means uh, this side of the triangle is square root of x, and that side of the triangle is square root of x. And now I need the area. In order to find the area, I need the height. And I can just do 1 half h times the base. All right, I need to find that height. So I can split this up. And I notice here that I have a right triangle. This distance right here is 1 half the square root of x. This is h. This is the square root of x here. All right, so I put that together. I, I work it out. It takes a little bit of work. I get the height is root 3, um, I'm sorry, the square root of 3x over 2. I know my area is 1 half base times height, so 1 half of square root of 3x over 2 times the square root of x. I simplify that and I get root 3 over 4 times x. So the area of this equilateral triangle, this, this triangular face, is root 3 over 4x. So coming back here, we see that we have root 3 over 4x delta x. The volume is going to be the limit as delta x approaches 0 of the summation of all those triangles. And you see here I have root 3 over 4x delta x. My integral is root 3 over 4x dx. And again, I'm integrating from 0 to 2. And from there, it's just a matter of finding the antiderivative, substituting 2 and 0, doing the subtraction. Um, and we get root 3 over 2 cubic units. The last one we'll take a look at is uh, semicircular cross sections. So yet again, um, go back to the very first example we did. We're using that same region R, but now those stacks that are standing up out of, out of that region um, are semicircles. So I have the base is square root of x. It has a thickness, kind of looks like a flat-bottomed uh, taco shell. The thickness is delta x. And so I need to find the area of that semicircle. Well, I know the area of any semicircle is 1 half pi r squared. I know the radius of this semicircle is 1 half square root of x. 
So I can do a little bit of work here and find that the area of this semicircular face here is pi x over 8. So I'm going to sum up all the semicircles, take the limit of that sum as delta x approaches 0. Notice here the area, um, the volume, I'm sorry, of a single semicircle was pi x over 8 times delta x, and my integrand is pi over 8 x, and then with a dx. So I take the pi over 8 out, just like I would with any other constant. Easy antiderivative, evaluate it at 2, evaluate it at 0, subtract, we get pi over 4 cubic units. So for these known cross-sections, in every single problem, we want to do um, a definite integral from A to B, so we have to look at what um, what our up, lower and upper limits of the x values that we're looking at are, that's A and B. And then we're taking the area of a single cross-section times the thickness of dx. So for these, cr for these um, volumes of known cross-sections, this is the general kind of um, template that we're using as we work through that.